Welcome to Spot on Grooming. I'm Jens. Today we're going to cover how to get mats out of your dog's fur and how to do a brush out to prevent those from forming. Our fluffy little friend here is Claire. She'll be serving as our model today. Let's start with the tools you'll need. All of these tools can be used to get mats out of your dog's fur, but you'll want to change which tool you're using depending on how dense the mat is and on how close it is to the dog's skin. We're going to cover how to use each one of these in this video. Please note that this video is intended for pet owners and not pet groomers. If you're a pet groomer, chances are you already know everything we're going to teach here. Let's start by covering the trouble spots where the mats form. While it's possible for mats to form pretty much anywhere on your dog, it's most common in high friction areas like around and behind the ears, around the collar, around the base of the tail, the hock, which is basically the heel of the dog, and in the tuck-ups, that is the armpits, and along the belly. So you're going to need to really watch out for those places because that's where you're going to find most of the mats. Now let's go to Sean in the shop and learn how to use these tools to do a brush out and take care of mats, starting with a slicker brush. The biggest mistake that people make with a slicker brush, or any brush for that matter, is they comb the dog's hair like they comb their own. So they just comb down. It doesn't do anything. The mats are underneath this. So you're, all you're doing is combing the top coat. You're not getting down to where the mats actually are. What you want to do with a slicker is, and I like to start at the feet, you actually pull the hair back, okay? And then you brush down. You brush that hair down where that line is, where I've pulled it back. And you go around it, okay? And then you just pull a little bit more up. It seems like it takes a while, and sometimes it does, but if you keep your dog in a regular uh, a brushing condition, you're not gonna, you'll be amazed at how quick this will go. So you also don't wanna use a real heavy hand because when you lift that up, you're getting very close to the skin here and you're breaking the mats and the tangles with the slicker. And if you brush too heavy, you're gonna burn them or tear their skin. You don't wanna do that either. So lift that hair up. Okay, and I'm just gonna continue around. And I work my way all the way around the dog doing this, okay? Generally, you can get through most mats with a slicker brush. So, we're coming up to a couple trouble spots. We've worked our way up the dog. We're about right here now. This side isn't bad, but the armpits are always really matted. <clears throat> now, ideally, you don't want to brush out matted armpits. It's just too difficult on the dog. So I would recommend cutting them out with shears, but when you lift up the arm right here, you can see it's all bald because I buzzed it with a tin blade. That's a really safe blade. But let's say you don't have a clippers. I would normally recommend if you're inexperienced to use ball tip shears, but what you would do is if you need somebody to help you, you lift up the arm where you can see this area. And if it's matted, you're just gonna be looking at white blobs with this color of hair. You're gonna take your shears and you're gonna be just very careful and you're gonna get in there and try and cut the mats out, okay? There's mat still left in here. Careful, see how she's pulling? You can, you can hurt a dog real easy depending on where your tips are pointed. So you never wanna have your tips pointed in anything if they can turn and jerk and break it. So there's a huge mat right here that I think I'm gonna just probably buzz out, but let's see. Now this is part of the armpit. You see that skin right there? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just be very careful. I know that this isn't the skin, and I'm gonna cut that out. So that was a big blob of armpit matting. Um, this stuff right on the corner with her length of hair will hide if I don't wanna brush it out, and you can see how close it is to the skin. That is very close. I'd have a hard time getting probably a five, seven five to a seven blade on there so i'm not going to try and brush that out i'm going to buzz it out and uh, <clears throat> that's something that unfortunately pet owners don't have the luxury of doing if you really needed to i would just recommend breaking it up as much as possible but again because it's so close to the skin you want to make absolutely certain that you're not pushing the shears into the skin or scratching it and you just want to get through that mat and break it up as much as you can and then try and brush it as best with, uh, as, as you can with the slicker. If that mat wasn't there and it was further away from the body, I might use a, a mat comb and, or a mat knife. And uh, these have these nice blades. It's not real sharp. It's not like razors, 
but it gets the job done to where if you hit these tangles and you just can't get the slicker through, it's just too much. Here's a mat, it's not very bad, but I'll show you what you would do with this. It's got this spoon, you put your finger on it, and you don't want to dig in with the tips, that's not the point. What you want to do is scoop, okay? So you're going to lift the hair up just like you did with the brush, and you're going to kind of go through with this knife. Now if you hit a big snag, instead of pulling hard, because that's not going to be nice to the dog, you hit the snag and then you isolate it. You get your finger behind the knot and then you hold it very firmly and you start to pull and chip away at uh, that mat until it's clear, okay? And you can do the same thing with the whole body of the dog with a mat knife. See, I grab the fur and then I pull that. I'm not just yanking on it because I don't want to hurt the dog. Now, a good way to test if you've got rid of the mats is if a slicker feels like it's going through pretty good, then you grab your comb. Start with the wide teeth, because you're generally going to have a wide side and a narrow side. If you can get the wide part of your comb through, then you got the mats out, okay? And if you are a groomer and you're doing any sort of scissor work, you don't ever want to scissor on a dog until you can get the fine tooth comb through every part of the dog that's going to be scissored. Okay, so the ears, when you're brushing these out, you've got mats. If you've got stuff like this, big balls, don't even bother messing with it. The bell of the ear is so sensitive, it's so easy to cut. You just don't even want to risk it with shears. You don't want to risk it with a brush. Uh, we use a number 10 blade. We just buzz it out. Even if you tried to cut this out with scissors, and you got in here and tried to do something like this, there's a good chance that you're going to peel up part of the skin because look when I just touch this it elevates the skin up you can see the pink and there's a very high chance of, of cutting across the skin cutting this way and putting in a, a nick or a puncture is one thing but making a slice across uh, a, a, a laceration will really bleed a lot we don't mess with it we don't advise uh, people at home to try and take care of that this dog's going to have a couple little bald spots behind her ear, but this is far safer than trying to mess with it. See, she's this is relatively a simple procedure. She's not even liking that. She's, she feels a little bit of a tug and tin blade, if it's having a problem getting under a mat, that is how close to the skin that that mat was. Hang on, we're almost there. We still got a piece of it to get out. There we go, baldy. But the mats are gone. The dog's not cut and the hair will grow back. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please hit subscribe below for more videos from Spot On Grooming.